Welcome to Six Gun Guitars Luthier Your Lessons. This is the Dreadnought uh, series of videos showing you how to make the acoustic guitar. Um, next been glued up for several hours now. It's probably been glued up for about nine hours or so or eight hours. Um, I'm going to take off the clamps. In this video what I want to do is just kind of outline my procedure for neck making so that way when it goes to the subsequent videos and we actually do the stuff you'll be able to just kind of remember and refresh you know kind of the basic order of operations because knowing what we're doing and why um, it really kind of helps especially as you're watching the steps go through. So the first thing I'm going to do is just get all the clamps off of this thing and then we'll go ahead and start discussing what you should be doing as far as layout goes, um, what you should be doing as far as positioning of certain things, um, how you're going to dig out a truss rod slot, um, things like that. And we'll go ahead and show you the what and the why for that and we'll bring you over to the bench to do that here. So here's the neck and it is out of the clamps. Glue's basically dried. Now what I do at this stage is I'll select a side. Now one of the sides is always going to be a little bit rougher than the other one. So this side looks a little bit nicer. This is where my saw cuts were. Um, this is lined up a little bit better on this side. So this side that you're actually looking at is going to be the good side. That's the side that I used to measure everything from. Um, that's how I find a center line. Um, that's how I square off a lot of my lines that I'm going to be doing across the top. That's where I'm going to do a lot of my layout. So what you're going to want to do is lay it down so that way that good side is facing up. And go ahead and come and chisel off all of the glue, all of whatever that's on here. And just try to get this thing not quite level. I mean it really doesn't have to be too straight, but you want to get it cleaned off so that we have a working surface. And then the next thing I'll do at that point, and it's helpful to have a fretboard for doing this, a fretboard with the 14th fret marked on it as well, so that way you know exactly where that's going to be. So if I want to pull my 14th fret up to say right about here, right nice and close to the end where I still have a little bit I can cut off, but I also still have a little bit to be able to shape with, um, I will make that land right there. This is going to show me on top of here where the start of my neck angle is going to be, or my headstock back deflection angle is going to be. And it's also going to show me where the bottom of that is. Now I like to make the distance between my fretboard up here at the neck about 5 eighths of an inch and the distance down here right around the 12th fret around 3 quarters of an inch. So what I'll be able to do is I'll be able to measure down 5 eighths right from where my nut theoretically should be, take another line from there and follow it down this way so that way I basically make my headstock shape. And again, that's just done with pencil. Go ahead and write it in. And the reason I put my 14th fret somewhere over here is it gives me about a half an inch from the end. So I've got a little bit that I can cut off with the chop saw so that way we maintain the right neck angle. But I also have a little bit of beef behind here that I can carve out my heel. So again, it doesn't have to be high science at this point. The neck is oversized and the blank is oversized for a reason. And these blocks are really big for a reason. So you've got a little bit of play back and forth here to get this right. So you get it on there, start marking things out. Mark where your nut's going to be, mark a couple of angled lines for your headstock, you know, try to get out, you know, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 degrees, you want to get a good back angle on that headstock. Mark where your 14th fret's going to be on here, and extend that mark down this way, but don't do anything with it yet, because I'm not going to cut that until the end. And you can also mark the general profile and the general slope of the neck all the way around. So after all that stuff's marked out, especially once you know where your nut's going to be. You mark a center line down the middle and then you come back in and you excavate your trench for your truss rod. Depending on where you bought your truss rod, depending on if you made it yourself, if you bought it from a store, there's going to be specific sizes for that. And later on in other videos I'll show you how I do my truss rods and how I put those in. But what I do is I excavate the truss rod slot first because I've got a nice flat side surface that I can run this across my router table with. Once you start carving things out and once you start making changes on here, you're not going to be able to carve this truss rod slot nice and evenly and easily as when you have it nice and flat like this. So you go ahead and do your truss rod slot after that and then you can start hacking off some of these guys. Um, just the only big thing you don't want to do, and that's what I'm not going to do, is change the width of here until the body's done. Because once the body's done, we're going to check the actual angle of the top to the shoulders and we're going to check it against the angle we want to have here so that way if we need to put in a little back deflection we can or if there's already a little kind of back deflection built into the body if it didn't get a perfect 90 we'll know kind of how to adjust the cut that we're going to make on the end of the piece here 
so that way the right amount of back deflection is, is on the guitar itself. So again, just a quick rundown. Use an old fretboard or, or know the measurement from the 1st to the 14th fret to go ahead and start doing your layouts on top of here. Mark what your profile is going to look like on the side of the neck all the way through and then you want to go ahead and start routing that truss rod cavity. So again, these are things that are going to come up in future videos. I just wanted you to see the basic you know, idea behind it. You know, and once that body's done, we're going to miter this thing from the bottom so that way it has an absolute perfect angle to meet the body. And after that point, we'll go ahead and attach a truss rod to this and then we'll start, I'm sorry, we'll attach a fretboard to this and actually start doing the carving on here. So like I said, if you have any questions, just shoot me an email, um, sixgunguitars at gmail.com. Um, again, this is just a basic explanation of what I'm doing with the neck plank and what you can do with it. And I'm going to go through my procedure coming up and turning this into a neck here in the next couple of videos. But just in case you have a little different truss rod or a little different style of doing it or questions, that's just kind of my basic rundown. So hopefully that helped out a little bit.